This is the dreaded F03 problem on a Bosch condensing dryer. If you get this problem once, you should look at my other video on how to clean it with a simple 10 minute procedure, zero cost. But if it comes back multiple times, then you need to see this video. I'm going to show you a detailed cleaning procedure that solves the real problem. So when I originally did the fix, I actually took out this back panel. This is a very challenging uh, mini step process, but I've realized that there's actually a way to do it from within the unit here. So I'm going to take my T15 screwdriver and it's a little bit tight here, but it is possible. I'm going to undo this. So I'm going to show you how to disassemble it from the inside here. Then I'm going to swap videos to show you what it looks like from above because it's an easier picture. I'm going to show you, show you how to clean it out from above, but you can clean it out from down here just as easily. And then I'll show you the uh, reassembly procedure. Okay, there goes my screw, but that's a T15 Torx screw. Okay, now you're going to lift up on this side. Click. That's good. It's not breaking anything. Okay, slide this forward and then out. There's actually a couple little tabs right here. That's what the, the click is. Here's the electrical wires that are secured to this unit with a wire tie right here. You want to cut this wire tie. You want to avoid cutting these wires because it would be difficult to fix without opening up the unit. So there's a couple different ways that people have tried doing this. Probably the most common is to simply take a razor blade utility knife like this with the knife facing outward so you're not going to risk cutting the wires and then just work at that. I'm going to try a different method which I think should work. Just using nail clippers. Come in here like this with the nail clippers. Get around the head of that's a little bit too big to get around the head. But if I grab around So that's exactly what we need you to do. Now, here's the tricky part. There's a little tab that you see pulling towards the camera here. And I'm going to pull that tab back towards the camera and then lift up with this. And then there's another one here. This tab, I have to push back towards the back of the dryer and at the same time pull up with these wires. And this is a tricky one to can't really see it. The tab goes back. I think I might need both hands on this one. Use a tool. Push the tab back and pull up. So there's not much room to push that tab there. But you push the tab back and pull up on this. There's 
there's a clear shot of the two connectors. This connector needs to be pushed that way while you pull the wire up. That one's pretty easy. This one, because the connector, this pin here is so short, very difficult, but you need to push this pin backwards while pulling the connector up. Okay, so the last part is there's this black hose. That's the outlet. And I'm gonna have to pull that. And it's very challenging to film this in this narrow space here. I'm gonna see if I can. You can see, there's the hose. I'm gonna reach in, pull the hose, and now you can see it's free. Then, there's a tab right here. Pushing it back with my thumb. Push that tab back, you can lift this out. Now the whole unit can come out. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the sump pump or condensate pump for a Bosch condensing washer or dryer. And this piece right here, this is the float. You can see how that float is not moving quite freely and you can see this algae on it here. This Here's the pump, you can see the algae on it there. And uh, I believe this connector here is some sort of a magnetic connector that senses when the sump is empty and it, it'll stop the pump. And, uh, and so the problem is that this is getting jammed up with algae. Now let's take a look at where I got this out of and you can see the real extent of the algae problem. I found, I cleaned this off, but I found that there was still gunk inside here. So there are these four tabs that you pry back. One, two, three, four here. You probably pull those tabs back and now you can access inside here. Use a toothbrush all of this out. It's even, even with the toothbrush it's hard to get that. So we're going to finish cleaning all of this out and then clean out the sump. I noticed inside here, so if you pull these two tabs back, now you can actually pull the float. I think I can pull the float out of here. It's got very wide tabs on it, so you have to spread it quite a ways. There we go. So now the float is completely out. You can see in here, it's, you have to get in here with the toothbrush, really scrub this sucker clean. Okay, so this is the inside of the dryer I, I just pulled this out of. You can see that black, that greenish, blackish stuff, that is a mat of algae. And it's right next to where the, the sump pump's float is. So you can imagine that's going to get in the way. And over here, it's even worse. This is next to the actual pump. So all of this needs to be cleaned out, and it looks like preventatively, I would recommend that people put a little bit of bleach in this sump to prevent this from happening. And uh, yeah, so we're going to clean this out and I'll also show you how I got here. Okay, so I've got a, just a, a wipe here. I'm gonna just grab all the bulk material. Obviously it's making a real mess, but the important part is I get most of this gunk out. real easy to see why this stuff has been continually plugging up the float causing FO3 and you think you got it but it keeps on coming back so I'm gonna continue to work on this but you can see I've got most of it cleaned out already Okay, so I'm going to show you the whole install procedure. Now, first of all, there's this hose in the back. 
gonna reach back there and just feel around, you know, do a blind. There's not many places it can go. It's pretty easy. Connect that up. Okay, so that black hose is now connected. Okay, now you have to, I should have said first, this whole plate slides down the far corner first, then, then this unit will drop down, and you gotta get, make sure those cords are out of the way. Okay, so it drops down and this locks into place, and so now you can't move it. Okay, now I've got to reconnect white cable, black cable. I'm not gonna worry about zip tying these again, but you wanna make sure the wires are down underneath this channel. Okay, let's see if I can get a closer view. You can see what we've got now. There's the, the zip tie that was there. Both cables in, black hose in. Okay, now last step is this. front edge, use this front edge first so that you know that you're in the right place. But then you're going to have to push on the back edge to have those click down first. The cables are a little bit askew. The cables. There we go. It's clean. Now, take your T15 screw. Screw in there. T15 screwdriver. Put that in there. Sorry, you can't see, but I'm just putting the screw down. screwed in, you're ready to go and test it out again. Okay, I'm going to show you the proper operation first of the sump. Okay, I'm going to turn the unit that's off now, I'm turning it on. Now if you look over on the left there, you should be able to see there's two slots with a thick slot in the center, and that controls the float. And if the float is detected to be high when the unit is turned on, it will drain the sump. And I want you to see how low the sump goes. The sump is going to go completely dry. And hopefully you can see the float going down. This is the proper operation. 